everyone, it's Samantha from Scrapmasters Paradise and welcome to another Learning Copics with Marker Pop video. Recently we talked about two color blending. I used a technique with rounded strokes and today we're going to talk about flicking slash feathering technique. In the Copic certification class they call this feathering and I like to call it flicking because there's something else called feathering and so I wanted to just call this flicking so you can call it whatever you want. Flicking, feathering. Well, I'm going to start this with two colors. I have got B95 and B97. This color combo is really good for like coloring jeans. It's just a good nice blue color. I've got them right here in my hand and I'm going to start with my lightest color first and show you light to dark and then I will show you dark to light. So here we go. I've got my light color B95 and this technique starts by flicking your marker. So you're you're going to press down on your paper and then raise your marker up kind of in a circle motion. And this is the fun part. You guys get to see how awkward this is. You raise it up. So I'm going to go down, flick and raise up my marker like in a like in a half moon shape. You see my motion that I'm doing? This is from your wrist mostly. So you're moving your wrist, raising up, and flicking. So this is definitely something that you are going to have to practice if you're not used to it. So you just raise up and you can use the tip of your marker and make teeny tiny little flicks like so. Or you can use the side of your marker and make wider flicks. And you can see how the color is darker here at the bottom. It creates kind of a gradient. So let me zoom in for you guys so you guys can see that. It, it creates sort of a gradient. You've got the darker color down at the bottom and it flicks out to the lightest color. And then when you get really good at it, you can control your flicks a lot better and make them all kind of evened up. Keep my flicks all kind of the same. You get the darkest color at the bottom, lighter color at the top. So starting with my lightest color, I'm going to lay down just a little area of flicking. We can say this is a part of a stamped image or something we're coloring in. And then I grab, then I grabbed the B97 here. It's the darker color. And I do smaller flicks. But these smaller flicks, notice how they don't go all the way up just go part of the way up. And then to get that blended better, I go back with the B95 and I'm going to flick right over that. And I can even flick more over just the top parts. And if I want more of the dark, I can go back in with that B97 and add more flicks of that darker color. You notice we're just building up our gradient here. It's starting to look pretty nice. And you've got some blending going on. So this, so this is just another way to do your blending besides just your rounded strokes. And you can get a lot of texture doing this technique too. So this is a good technique to do when you're coloring hair or fur, or something that's going to have a lot of texture to it. And so I would keep working with this since it's created sort of a line. Um, I can even do some zigzagging through the middle just to try to blend that harsh line out and flick over it to make it smoother looking. And you can just keep working with it until you like how it turns out. But that is the basic technique. I started with the lightest color, then added the dark, then blended it with the light. You can do the same thing starting with your darkest color and just do your smaller flicks with the darker color. Then take your lighter color and do longer flicks. And if you go dark to light, this is an easier way to blend already. You know, you're getting blending when you're adding in your lighter strokes. And go back and add a little bit more of the dark. And then flick with the lighter color or zigzag with the lighter color to make it blend out a little bit better. It really doesn't matter if you go from light to dark or dark to light. You basically get the same result. There's certain exceptions like when your darkest color is really really dark it's easier to start with the lighter color and lay down kind of a base and that way it's not super hard to blend out that really dark color. So with this one 
the color is pretty dark, so I probably would start light to dark with this color combo, just to make the blending a tiny bit easier. But for the most part, it does not matter. Oh, that is your technique for today. This is one of the basic Copic techniques, so be sure to practice this if this is new to you, and start getting used to that wrist motion. So I hope that you found this video helpful, and I will be back in two weeks with another Learning Copics with Marker Pop video. And be sure to head over to the Marker Pop blog, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll put out a new video in two weeks. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.